It's a subterranean <laughs> setting for those subterranean <laughs> sounds, rah. Rockers! And here we go. <laughs> Welcome to Palazzo Caravella. I'm Christopher Caravella, C Double. This is my boy names. Saxon. Saxon. DJ Saxon. <laughs> uh, we're, we're the Deadweight Boys. Uh, what's Deadweight? Deadweight's a forward leaning club music night. Yo, shot your mama one more in. I know you could have never said to the dawn. Only a killer, 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 supposed to want to know what I'm on. No, you can't swing it, bring it with a dawn. Well, I guess we started out pushing bass music, um, you know, but that slowly evolved into something bigger. Um, you know, and we encompass all forms of like electronic dance music now. At the time, it all started when we were both 20 years of age. How old are you guys now? We're 25. 25. So yeah, it's, it's not really that long ago. And um, at that time, I was getting into a lot of like a different underground electronic music I was finding around on the internet and stuff. And I saw Chris at a mate's party and um, he was DJing there. And uh, like I actually appreciated some of the music. Like I was like, oh, some of the music. You should have heard him after. You should have heard him after. You should have heard him after. Man, that was sick. I love that. So <laughs> next time, next time he sees me out, we're at Shape. You know, everyone used to go to Shape because that's where they used to the dubstep and drum and bass parties. Sax is a little bit munted, you know, and I'm there dancing with a girl, and I can see him out of the corner of my eye just looking at me, and I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? What's what's going on? So, you know, like, leave my girl, go, so I go talk to him and say, hey man, like, I remember you from my next party, you know, like, what's happening? He says, he's buckled in, he says, man, <laughs> man, I really like your set at that party. I really like your set, like, I want to do this. So well, I'm going to buy a sound system, we're going to become portable, we're going to become portable DJs or whatever it is, mobile DJs, and we're going to throw parties, we're going to throw raves. Yo, that one again, I'll turn up with a fat one again Yo, don't trim or scratch one again, or ling or latch one again Yeah, yeah, it's that one again, I'll turn up with a fat one again and So, that's him there bro, in the middle of it all Look at that motherfucker there the night of the bird was so good. Our first night of the bird. It was just dead weight number one. We got you know, the paper chain boys involved. We had uh, Kip Pop and Zeke doing like a showcase. And Man, but to be honest, I don't think like we ever had a night where it was like, yeah, you know what, we've done a good job. I think it was like, you know, we beat ourselves up over it a lot. You know, it's always like you, you finish one night and you go home and you're like, man, it was good, but we could have done that better. You know, I think that's the one thing that kept us doing it over five years. You know, we always felt that there was room for improvement. You know, it's not like we ever, it's not like we ever felt like we'd plateaued or, you know, we'd, we'd reached the pinnacle of what we could do. You know, it's, it's when it gets to one o'clock in the evening, you know, and like the night's in full swing and you can take a step back. You can stand at the back of the room and watch the people having a good time. You can hear the sound, you know, the way that it's meant to be heard. That's when you can say, look, we've done, we've done an all right job tonight, you know, and this is what it's about. It's about bringing people together and it's about listening to the music. That's a tip for you young promoters out there. Make sure you get the sound system right. You get that sound system right, you get bodies moving. Trust. You know, I've been doing it since I was 15, you know, that's like all those records there. Yeah, I, buy, I started buying those records when I was 15 years old, you know, like, if you're going to DJ, be diverse. Don't just buy the records in the, like, field of music that you play. Buy a bit of everything, man. Look at this. We've got Captain Lockheed and the Starfighters. What do we got over here? We've got Jean-Michel Jarre, we've got Frank Zappa, we've got the Doors, Talking Heads, everything. Buy a bit of everything. Listen to everything. Trust me, it's all important. Hey! DJ Loon. Hey! We've got the original art. Yeah. There's the original sketches and uh, design development. There. there. That's one of our sticker designs. I love that one. That's sick. That's like our third party or something. That's the logo right there. Serious. <laughs> Even got eyes on this one. But yeah, we it's got a we, VIP logo. Yeah, we we got a lot to thank him for. Um, yeah, you know, pretty much like your whole identity. Yeah, for he, sure. he hit the nail on the head with that skull. Yeah. It's instantly recognisable. It's, it's what we based the brand on. You know, it was like that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of lame now, but it's that deep, dark dungeon sewer sound shit. Um, you know, that we've we've all grown out of by now. But you know, it's it's what we fell in love with about the music. It was that dark room aesthetic. 
I've always been involved in like parties since like I was growing up. So it was kind of a little bit natural. My parents knew it was kind of coming, but uh, like they were all supportive, but they weren't at the same time because everyone knows what happens at, at some parties, you know, like it's not always the most honest things. <laughs> But that's okay. Everyone's there. To especially have fun, especially have in the time. music that we're into, man. It's that hedonistic <laughs> lifestyle and culture, man. You know, I come from traditional like European families, so you can imagine my dad's reaction. He was like, "What the fuck are you doing? Like, go back to uni. You know, why the fuck did you drop out of uni to do yeah. this shit?" Um, but you know, he's come round and he's seen that we've yeah. we've been doing it for a while and we've been yeah, successful. So. Exactly. Our famous tease. Is that the first one? The first ones we used to hand do. Yeah, we hand, we printed, our, them. Made hand our own, printed them in my kitchen. Made our own silk screens, and but they're a lot of them are long gone there. It was it, man for me. It was that <coughs> DIY rave thing. Put you the know? little logo on here or a big one on the back, and yeah. that was it. You know, it's like my uncle. My <laughs> uncle grew up going to raves back in the early '90s and late '80s, and so you know, he used to show me his own energy T-shirts and that kind of stuff. And I'd look at that and I'd say. Fuck, man, I want to do that. You know, it was, it was the little things like yeah. you'd go to raves. Your uncle the tees and yeah, my, my uncle's got a couple of tees and yeah. stickers and my old cassettes <laughs> and that kind of stuff. You know, when I was in high school, I'd, I couldn't afford a digital recorder, so I'd record my mixes to tape and we'd listen to them at lunch on tape. You know, shout out to any of my friends that are watching this. You'll you remember <laughs> that. I'd make, make them suffer through my so fucking is. tapes at lunch. Dead weight free lunch. <laughs> Yeah, this is to all the people that don't believe I have Italian records. Yeah. 